All right, so I'm going to make a video on total engine reassembly. It's probably going to be several videos long. I'm just kind of recording. Uh, there's going to be voiceovers. I got the head back from the, or excuse me, I got the block back from the machine shop. 30 over on the pistons. Everything's been cleaned up. He had to put new freeze plugs or core plugs in it. I was unaware of the fact that two things. One, you need to use an anaerobic sealant kind of like a Loctite, something that will cure without exposure to oxygen. I didn't use that, I used the gasket cinch stuff if you remember. And also you're supposed to peen the face of the core plug and it just kind of puts a dimple in it. I assume that provides some strength or something, I'm not real sure. I had no idea that that was the case. Uh, I didn't find any of that in any of my research. So essentially I've got the block back, the head is still there, I hope to get that back in the middle of the week, next week. But uh, obviously you can see that it's on the bench. I got to transfer it over to the stand and everything like that. So this is going to just be some random stuff. I'll speed up the stuff that's boring and we'll just kind of go from there. All right, so the first thing I do is install a, a, a freeze plug, three quarter inch freeze plug into the block hole here. This is the breather for the block to uh, for crankcase ventilation. The newer styles went to a, a PCV or otherwise called the Smith's valve. Uh, but back in the day with like this Mark 1 motor is they didn't care about that stuff and they just vented it right to the street. Next here I'm going to be putting in the oil gallery plugs. Uh, there's hex plugs, hex headed plugs in the front and the back. Uh, I'm putting in the rear one here. Or I will be here in a second. And that essentially just screws in and I snugged it up. Couldn't find a torque spec for this. Uh, but I essentially put the uh, the short end of the uh, Allen key in there and, and just got a little bit of movement out of the block and then and called it good. Similar tightness for the front. The side oil gallery plugs are, are small bolts, 7 16 head or so, uh, only about a half an inch long. I tried to show you there, but I went off frame. Uh, the unique thing about this is they have a copper washer, so the copper is malleable and will uh, deform a little bit, and that provides essentially a gasketed seal for you. Uh, if I remember correctly, these are only about 15 foot pounds of torque as they go in. I was able to find a torque spec for those. The, uh, the front gallery seal, the plug, the hex plug, unlike the rear one, uh, is, it sticks out from the, for the face of the block a little bit. If you can look there, you can see the rear one. That's what I'm explaining here. The rear run recesses completely in, but the front one sticks out a little bit. It's only about a sixteenth of an inch or so, but uh, it was enough to, to cause me concern when I first did it because I didn't really remember it sticking out. Uh, but there is a cutout in the front engine plate to allow this to occur. So don't, uh, don't try to force this thing all the way in. The final thing I do here is I install the plug for the water passages in the block. This is just a brass uh, plug with a fabric washer on it. Later designs had a, like a stopcock on it. Now I'm moving on to the block getting this thing cleaned up, uh, paying, paying special attention to the bearing surfaces again and try to keep them meticulously clean. Uh, I have a microfiber cloth here, lint-free cloth, wipe that down uh, pretty good trying to get all the stuff out of there. Uh, I'll use compressed air also to blow out any um, remaining little pieces of dirt or grime or whatever you can think of. Again, I can't stress enough to make this as clean as possible. This is a non-moving surface obviously but your uh, bearings are going to exert quite a bit of pressure and anything that you've got, any little pieces of dirt or grit are going to start to cut into your bearing again because it's uh, it's got quite a bit of pressure. So I'm using compressed air here to, to blow off anything um, that may be left over. Um, again, any dust or dirt or grime, that stuff's all got to get out of there. Take a, Try to take a good look at it as good as I can to make sure I don't have anything in there. Uh, inspection with a very bright light um, just to make sure I'm keeping everything clean so a couple couple little pieces and stuff in there uh, the fabric is is obviously going to be all right because it's not going to be able to withstand the motor but uh, any darker darker spots or anything like that you want to get that stuff out of there uh, then I take a, a scotch bright pad clean the surfaces up uh, obviously this this could have been done uh, before I, I wiped everything down, but um, just here, just trying to get out any uh, any oil that may be burned onto the bearing surface or anything like that. Uh, the number three, what I'm working on right here, the number three has got the thrust washers on it, um, so I clean those surfaces up too, and clean the surfaces up where the bearing caps are going to come down to make sure 
that uh, those are clean. Then I have Brake Clean, which is very good because it's a it's a pretty aggressive cleaner. Uh, it doesn't leave a whole lot of residue when it dries, and it dries relatively quickly. So again, I spray that down and wipe that off, and then I bring the compressed air in both to blow anything off of there and to, uh, to help the brake clean dry up a little bit. Uh, and again, another very bright light. Um, I'll put a link to this light. I love this thing uh, in the description. It's not real cheap, but it's really good light. Uh, again, making sure that everything is uh, as clean as possible here. All right, next, I clean up the bearings themselves. Again, as good as I can, and start to seat them into the bearing recesses or the bearing areas in the block. Uh, so the the bearings are slightly larger uh, around than than the bearing surfaces in the block. So when you put those in, I essentially uh, kind of lock them into one side and then push down on the other side, and it and it and it compresses the bearing a little bit um, and slides them down. If you look at number two and number three, you can see the little, there's little notches for cutouts. The bearings themselves have little tabs on them, which kind of match those notches. Uh, again, so I get it lined up and flat as possible, keep my thumb on the one side, and then press it down in. Uh, not very difficult. You don't want to try to do this a bunch of times because you will kind of gouge into the bearing uh, on the back side where, where it uh, is sliding into the block, obviously. There's not really a whole lot you can do to prevent that. Um, but you want to try to get it, uh, get it in there with with minimal amount of wiggling it around and moving it and all that kind of stuff, so that you don't mess anything up. And then I get the final one in, um, get that pressed in uh, with no problem. Then I try to eyeball it and get the uh, the bearing surfaces centered up, um, four to frontwards to backwards into the bearing, and also uh, vertically to to try and keep them as flat and as centered on the bearing as possible. Again, just real light taps here with the uh, with the mallet. Don't want to be beating the heck out of this stuff here. And then feeling with my finger nail to make sure I'm not catching on the bearing surface here. To make sure that they're as centered up in that in that bearing in the block as possible. A lot of a lot of looks, a lot of uh, adjustments. Just again to make sure that they're as flat as possible in there. So now with that done, I uh, use my engine assembly lubrication here. Uh, again, I'll put a link to that in the description. It's like a red, really, really tacky, uh, but really, really slick assembly uh, lubricant. And just put that on there and, and wipe it all over the place just to get all the bearing surfaces lubed up. And that stuff will, uh, will sit there for quite a, quite a while. Like I said, it's almost, um, it's almost like Elmer's glue. It's pretty tacky, but it's really, really slick. You can, if you catch it every once in a while, you can kind of see me pulling my fingers away, or you might even see it. And it's like little strands, almost like a, a spider web uh, strands to, to kind of, to kind of stick to stuff. And it really adheres really well, and it's really slick. Now that's that done, I bring the crankshaft in, and drop the crankshaft down, and uh, it feels pretty good. Kind of wobble it to make sure that I don't have any, uh, any wobbles on it. And uh, yeah, the crankshaft's in there. So with the crankshaft in there, it's time to get the bearing caps on. Uh, obviously starting at the front, I'm working my way back. You kind of uh, put these down and, and kind of wiggle them down a little bit and, and they'll set in there. Uh, prior to this that I did off camera that you didn't really see is I put the upper bearings in uh, the caps themselves before uh, I put the caps on, obviously. Uh, also applied the, the um, lubricant, the assembly lube to that. Um, putting the bolts in here. Uh, I had problems with the bolts, the original bolts. Uh, I had to buy new bolts. I got some NOS ones. Uh, you can read about that in the blog. I'll put a link in the, uh, the description of that since I'm uh, quite well separated from doing this video from the time that I actually put that in. Um, so the number one and number two bearing caps go on and they'll get torqued down. It's it's, a, it's quite a bit of torque. I don't remember. It's like 50 foot-pounds or something like that. So, so uh, exception of the uh, crank bolts for the flywheel I think that's one of the highest torques in the motor uh, but anyway the other thing that you got to put in at this time is the thrust bearings or the thrust thrust washers in the back and what the thrust thrust washers do I'm having problems saying that is prevent the crankshaft from moving forward to aft in the motor uh, when you push the clutch in too far um, I got special uh, thrust washers from uh, 
from from a gentleman on the web. I'll, I'll include the uh, the link. He makes these himself. They're all solid uh, alloy instead of the uh, the cladded uh, washers that that are original equipment. And there's there's two of those. One in the front, one in the back. There's oil channels, oil passages on those. So you got to make sure that those go in right again. I, the uh, the appropriate blog post that I did on that, uh, you can read about that. But but they're only um, half. So you put one in in the front and one in the back, and then you kind of spin it down, and it sits down in the bottom. Um, there's a recess in the number three bearing cap, if you remember. I was cleaning that with the uh, the green of the scotch Bright pad. But the the cap itself doesn't have a recess at all, so that kind of locks that, that bearing in. And then here, the uh, front one's in here. They're putting the rear one in, and uh, with the passage in the oil passage in the appropriate spot, and I kind of jiggle the uh, crankshaft a little bit, and... Uh, essentially just falls right down in there and lines right up uh, all by itself uh, so not uh, not real difficult then put the bearing cap on and uh, and pretty much that that's about it so I got all those torqued down got them all done and uh, the crankshaft was in